Hello and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast channel. I'm your host, Isaiah, and today we're going to talk about the Tesla Route Planner and the newest update to the Tesla Route Planner, which makes it even more accurate than it already is. To help us understand and explain this, we have Ryan, who is going to walk us through what makes the Tesla Route Planner so good, what this update has to store. Um, Ryan, how do you know about the Tesla Route Planner so well of course yeah so i have a lot of personal experience with the route planner i owned a model 3 for quite a while put uh, fifteen thousand miles on that and i've put many thousand more on test vehicles and we're coming pretty recently off of our i-90 surge which was our cross-country race and i had the opportunity to drive in the tesla model s plaid so to provide even more uh recent example of uh just some of my experience with that. So I've I've spent a lot of time in Teslas, a lot of time on road trips, and pretty intimately fam familiar with all of their charging uh, software and how that all works together. Awesome. And what makes the route planner so accurate? What factors does it take into factoring how much range you're going to get? Yeah. So it's it's one of the more sophisticated route planners. Some of the one of the better ones on the market, in my opinion. And it takes into account pretty much everything that you could think of. You've got your route, of course. You also have uh, elevation, temperature, wind, uh, any sort of precipitation that might be on the route, traffic, and uh, of course, some several other factors that I'm sure I'm not mentioning. But it really does a great job at integrating everything that's going on actively and putting everything together. Another nice little thing that they do is planning all your stops for you. So they do a pretty good job at getting you at a reasonable state of charge and trying to prioritize less busy and faster chargers when it's possible. It's not perfect, but it's a pretty sophisticated system and it tends to do pretty well. And for the most part, pretty much if you put in a destination, you'll be able to get there if you follow the route planner. Okay. And what about your experience on the I-90 surge? How accurate was it? It was, for the most part, very accurate. We did have one section. It was maybe about five or 600 miles in, and it just severely underestimated how much energy we would need. So we had to drop our speeds a ton, like 15 miles an hour from what we wanted to be going, and did that for like a couple hours. So that made us a little bit nervous and really dropped our confidence in the route planner uh, and made us kind of nervous and second guess uh, for a lot of the rest of the trip. But after those few hundred miles, maybe two or 300 miles, it became a lot more accurate. It was pretty much spot on within a few percent every single time. And we were pretty happy with how it was, how it was working. Uh, one thing that we did note uh, is while, while this race was a, a race, we had our 10 mile per hour uh, over the speed limit cap. So we were not supposed to go any more than 10 miles per hour over the speed limit uh, with a maximum of 85 miles an hour. And even though we had been doing this road trip for thousands of miles, even at the very end of the trip, we still had to charge up a little bit more than we would have planned. So let's say we wanted to arrive at a charger at 7% state of charge. We might actually charge up to when it said we'd uh, leave having 10% or 12% arrival because we'd use up that extra energy. Basically, it wasn't really accounting for the fact that we were going 10 miles per hour over, even though that's how we were driving. I think it could have done a little bit better at just dynamically changing it and paying attention to the driving style to get just that little bit more accurate. Okay. And maybe that's what's happening for the latest Tesla software update. So we see here from Dan Berklin on Twitter X. He says, I'm not sure what changes Tesla has implemented, but with the release of Tesla OS version 2024.33.35, the trip planner is now remark remarkably precise. In the past, especially on windy days like today, the trip planner could be off by as much as 10%, especially when going more than five over the speed limit. Over the last two days, you've experienced wind gusts over 30 miles an hour, and despite maintaining a speed offset of plus nine miles an hour for much of the trip, the trip planner predicted our arrival state of charge within a single percent. Perhaps FSD speed profiles are now fully integrated into the trip planner's calculations. Either way, great work, Tesla. And knowing how much of the stretch of I-90 was going through those super windy mountains and hills uh, through Montana and Idaho and South Dakota. Also, not to mention, right, you're 
we're trying to go 10 over the speed limit kind of seems like what Dan was going through. And so maybe um, if we did it again, the trip planner would be a little more precise and even have a response from um, Wes Morrill from Tesla. And he says, actually, the trip planner got a huge rewrite on the back end. Uh, I had a great conversation with one of the engineers working on this over a morning run a few weeks back. It's pretty neat. The rewrite also unlocks additional features like desired arrival charge. Now, kind of discussing some options here, do you think that this, the trip planner is more conservative or like more out of spec style where you're really at a fast pace, right? You're trying to get moving. Um, what do you think? I think right now, how it is typically is actually fairly aggressive. I think it does leave a reasonable amount of buffer, uh, usually uh, more than 10%, but some usually less than 15%. So somewhere in that ballpark. And in my opinion, I think especially for most EV drivers, that's a pretty good uh, range to target. It gives you enough buffer to play with and uh, be comfortable. And if something goes wrong, you should have a little bit of charge to play with, but it's not so much charge that you're going to have really slow and uh, boring charging sessions where you're plugging in at super high states of charge and getting poor charging speed. So I think it already strikes a pretty good balance. However, people are different. Some people do want to dry, drive and get there at 1%, 0% state of charge and really maximize the car, do as much as they possibly can, really out of spec style. And some people aren't like that. And I, I know my parents aren't. They'd much rather arrive at a charger with closer to 20 or 30% state of charge. And, you know, if, if something goes wrong, they could make it to somewhere else. And, uh, you know, I think people have different perspectives and uh, opinions, and there's not necessarily a right or wrong way. So giving people the flexibility to choose, I think is just so much better than forcing uh, one idea or what some people might think as like a, a good option. I think it's just a lot better to be able to choose. Right. And you would think, right, maybe it will see an update. So it isn't like this now that maybe you'd be able to select more of a conservative or more of a, a right, you're risking for a lower percentage in the future. So Tesla doesn't have that now, but that could possibly be a great option that they add to allow drivers, depending on how fast paced they want to be during the road trip to select. What do you think? Exactly. That's what I think Wes is getting at. And it's, it's a brilliant idea, a really good strategy. I think the only thing to keep in mind, which I'm sure is on their mind as well, is if you want to select something below like 10 or 5% state of charge, give them a little bit of a warning. Make sure that they know that, hey, you're risking it a little bit here. Uh, make sure you know what you're doing. And then uh, let them do that. As long as they have the option to do it, I think that's, that's the most important thing. So, okay. And I guess... Big question, why, if there isn't an accuracy, right, you're noticing a 5% margin uh, of difference, why might that be something you see in the trip planner? Yeah, it's, it's something that is sometimes in there a little bit. So if you go into the trip planner screen under the uh, energy tab, you can see where the energy went and you can kind of see a little bit about where energy went and it says like, oh, you used a little bit extra range here and here. I think they could do a little bit better job at explaining that a little bit better and perhaps explaining their logic behind it. Like, oh, hey, it was actually colder than uh, uh, the weather predicted or we saw worse efficiency over this area. Uh, I think just having a little bit more information could be a really nice uh, add-on to it to have. Additionally, another feature that they used to have was looking at your trip efficiency over the past either miles or minutes past 5, 10, or 15 minutes. And something that that was really useful for was if you're going fast and you might not quite make it to the charger, so you want to slow things down a little bit, but you don't want to slow down too much, uh, using that graph, you can really see your live efficiency and get a really good idea of how much you need to slow down. And using the amount of energy you have left and how efficient you're being, you can really tailor in exactly the right speed so that you'll get in at precisely the desired state of charge. Again, this is super nerdy, like really into the weed stuff, but it's sounding like those are some of the updates that we're going to be getting. So it's pretty exciting, especially for, I'm sure, the people who are all listening to this podcast. Awesome. I've learned a lot. Um, 
yeah, I haven't used the Tesla Rotor Planner in a very long time. So this is just new information to me. Um, so I've actually learned a lot here. I see why Kyle said, hey, contact Ryan. Let's talk about this. So thank you so much for, for joining me on this episode. Um, do you have any other notes about the Tesla Road Trip Planner? Not at the moment. I'm eagerly awaiting uh, some of these updates. I really want to try them myself as well. So I'm, I'm sure we'll have some content on that as soon as that's pushed through. So be sure to stay tuned. And again, thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking with you and great to be, wow. able, uh, be able to discuss all of it. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, Ryan. Again, this is the Out of Spec podcast. We hope to see you guys in the next one. Stay charged.